Yeah, what's going on? I want to talk about uh, Tariq Nasheed. Because I'm tired of these coon agents like Umar Johnson, Tariq Nasheed. Plus, I'm going to talk about what I've been talking about for years. These immigrants, Mexicans, and Caribbeans. Last time I was talking about... I can't help but notice when... I talk about something that's when the bigger YouTubers start talking about it. Like the Caribbean imposters. Because they never paid attention to these type of things. Tariq Nashi, in particular, keeps going around trying to act like he knows how to tell the difference between a Jamaican and somebody else. You notice how he was saying that Jamaicans like Buster Rhymes and... These other people, he can tell that they were Jamaican by how they spoke. That's how you know he's full of shit. I could tell that they're Jamaican by how they look. <laughs> so, it's, I mean, it's not like Jamaicans actually fucking resemble us. They're really different. And each pe person from each part of the Caribbean... They look more similar to each other than they do to us. But at the same time, they got distinct looks that you can tell where most of them come from. Obviously, there's going to be some overlap. But you can tell how they look. And, you know, somebody's been asking me to do a video to explain it. Part of me wants to. The other part of me is like, God damn, once I do it, you know what's going to happen. People going to take the information Act like they came up with the shit. See, <laughs> and then say, uh, Alquan, Hard Cold, who the fuck is that? You know, start saying shit like that. So that's why I'm like, man, you know, part of me is like, I don't even want to waste my time doing all that kind of shit anymore, man. Damn. I mean, these other people getting, you know, benefits and support doing this shit. That's why I can't even get deep into the research. And I'm still waiting to get this new fucking CPU. But this place I get the shit from, man, they, they, they out of the one, they just happen to be out of the one I'm looking for. I mean, god damn. I mean, technically they ain't gonna make or break my system, but I'm just saying, you know, if I can get the shit now, put the shit together, and, and, and do what I need to do and sell the old parts. Then I'll be good. I don't want the highest highest model because I don't need that. And it costs one hundred and fifty dollars more. The main point is I don't need that part because I don't do some of the things that I used to do. But um, they don't have what I need. So you know, people like. Nah, she, you know, they go around, they lie. You know, he's in California. He acts like, and he keeps hating on New York, Brooklyn. Or he's mentioning Brooklyn and Caribbeans in Brooklyn. He's not from New York and he hasn't been to New York enough to know who's who, where they at, what they look like, and how each world gets down. Me, I've never been to Staten Island in my life. In fact, I was just thinking about the Bronx Zoo the other day because I'm like, damn, I went to the Bronx Zoo when I was a little kid, but damn it, I've never been there. It's hard to believe I believe I, I remember that shit. Got the pictures, too. <laughs> I don't know how old I was, either, to be honest with you. But I'm like, damn, I haven't been to a motherfucking Bronx Zoo I, I don't know how long. I think I wasn't even 10 years old, to be honest with you. So, this guy, he doesn't know a Jamaican. I don't expect him to know one, what, what these people look like. But he keeps saying Brooklyn has all the Caribbeans, which, of course, you know, anybody that knows, you know, not only do they have the Caribbeans, Brooklyn has practically all the motherfucking immigrants <laughs> in, the, in the motherfucking world. Uh... <laughs> In Brooklyn. So. 
Again, like I said, when I go to Brooklyn, they know that I'm not one of them. Just upon sight. Because, let me tell you this, the basic shit. They know who we are just from the visual. And us, those of us who grew up around these people, we know who they are from the visual. Just like we know who the fucking African is walking around the street. And if you don't know a Caribbean, Jamaican from the visual, I mean, even by the way they dress, she give you an idea. Especially the females is either tacky wigs or, you know, they wear uh, knit caps Uh <laughs> In 100 degree weather, I keep seeing that shit so many times. I'm like, man, if I wear a baseball hat in 80 degree weather, I'm sweating. So imagine a knit hat, your hair undone, running wild in 100 degree weather. They'd rather go around looking like an idiot than to do something with their hair. Like Kevin Durant. Or rather wear his hair peasy on national TV for years with the ball spot than to do something with his hair. Now, I see when he went to the Olympics, I think the other players said, man, come on, man. You at the motherfucking Olympics, goddammit. You got to get your hair in order, man. So they got his hair in order. Hopefully that should have spilled over to the NBA season. Because the motherfucker is too old and too rich to be going around looking like that. And because of that shit, um, it clearly sent the man in a depression. You know? Because, you know, no matter how much money you got, once that hair starts going, there ain't nothing you can do about that shit. But for the most part, most guys, you know, they just let it roll. Would you rather have the money or your hair? Some people, they probably rather have the hair. But I think most will take the money. <laughs> and his female game, I haven't heard nothing about Durant having a female since Latoya Luckett. So I don't know what the fuck is going on with him. I'm surprised with his mother, the way she is. She seems to be pretty outgoing, so to speak. You would think that she said, hey, baby, get your hair done. Get you a girl. Where are my grandkids at? All that kind of shit. Cause you know, I don't know how old he. I think he's thirty-four. You know, at that age, that's when people start asking questions. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times people kept on asking me, "When you getting married? When you having kids?" The next thing I knew, wasn't still didn't get married, but uh, the kids came. I was like, damn, these motherfuckers, they, they bucked the hell out of you. You know what they're really asking, though, when they talk about when you get married, when you having kids. They're really trying to say, motherfucker, you're gay. That's what they're really trying to say. <laughs> that's what they're really trying to say. Now, that's the bigger question to ask when people like Cory Booker and Kevin Durant are successful and got a lot of money. Then you got to start asking those questions. Regular people... It is what it is, but these these successful people, because you know, once the money starts coming around, females come around nonstop. But anyway, let me. I'm really getting off track with that. Get back on track. I was talking about uh, Godfrey Cambridge and other Caribbeans, and in the uh, last one, and how the white man, the small hat, because they're in charge of the Hollywood film industry. And you notice how I was talking about this, then Tariq Nashi starts talking about this. <laughs> and you notice how when somebody who watches my video gives me a tip, like to step and fetch it. Have you noticed how I gave I didn't I didn't remember the person's name, but I always said the person on my video told me about step and, step and fetch it being a Jamaican. You never heard me 
just start talking about it like I already knew it and didn't give anybody the credit. That's not how I roll. Because I went to college. That's why you so you you, you gotta give people the credit. You learn that shit when you go to college. You don't when you're a fucking uh low down con man, <laughs> you just take, take, take and get all the money that you can get. Anyway, let's talk about Godfrey Cambridge. And that got me to thinking. As I told you how the most of the Caribbean actors and athletes and in, in, uh, that get promoted in the U.S. When they did movies, how often did you hear some other character calling them a jigaboo, a coon, a nigger, and all this other stuff? Shine, porch monkey. I want you to really think about that shit. They usually call the black Americans these names, whether it's coming from the white man, white adversary in the movie, or even a, a Caribbean. Nigga, don't make no mistake about it. They know everybody's background. Don't even act like they don't. And the way things are going, you just look around where you're at, just looking at people doing a, a little construction thing. You know, they use those little uh, sight things, I guess, to get the alignment going. One of them looked like a Mexican. The other one looked like an Italian. I'm like, man, you see, they give these Mexicans these tools to do these things. But not us. So for all my life, I've never seen a black man doing that. And now with the few blacks I see doing construction, I don't see them doing the construction. I see them... You know, cleaning up and, and putting shit away or handing somebody else some shit like that. I'm like, it's fucked up. They're getting paid, but, you know, that's a job, really, that anybody can do. And how come these Africans don't learn the trade and build their own shit instead of helping the Chinese? Now, the Chinese have been building for quite some time, so you can see their buildings. I told you this shit is mathematically and symmetrically perfect. And they keep this shit going, all the wood shit going back uh, thousands of years. They keep wood structures together. You compare that shit to the stone uh, structures. You know, they, they clearly like to preserve this shit. Now, again, with all the different wars they had, I'm sure a lot of shit was destroyed too. But of course, North Africa, so-called Middle East, had different types of invaders. Some people didn't respect some shit. So, you know, that's the way it goes. Anyway, Godfrey Cambridge. I figured, you know what, since I was talking about him, I want to look at his uh, career. So he had films, I think, going back to 1964. I think that was his first movie. That's crazy. He didn't really last long. I think he died in 1976, I think. <clears throat> And um, it's crazy. The first film was in black and white. I think the rest of his movies were in color. And I, I noticed a few things with his movies. Number one, in the 60s, he was a big man. And I ain't talking famous. I'm talking about that motherfucker was big. If you thought he was big in Cotton Comes to Harlem, I mean, that motherfucker was fucking morbidly obese <laughs> in these other movies. I said, damn. You see more of his true hairline, too. <laughs> you know, Watermelon Man, you know that was a fake-ass uh, hair he had on his head. I ain't talking about the white wig, either. Um, Yeah, but he was fat. I know it's the trend, though. He was usually the only black person in there. Dark as hell. And the other characters always, you know, try to act like he was just there. You know, I'm like... The man is obviously not only the only black guy, but, you know, extremely dark, which will, you know, some people might look at and say, damn, he's dark, you know. Now, I didn't watch his movies. I, I, I Surprisingly, I was able to find most of them except for one of them and none of them were on Tubi. Uh, I had to get some shit the old fashioned way. Emule. 
So I got some of them. He did a movie with Robert Wagner. Uh, there's also movies. You, if you search Microsoft Bing, I don't know who hosts it. I think it's some Russian site, but they got a lot of movies, rare movies on that site. I don't even bookmark the site. I, since every time I'm looking for a rare movie, I put it in the Bing search. I put the movie in, then you hit watch. Then it'll come up or even Google to hit watch. And then it'll show you movies where it's, where the movie is at. The ones you pay, then there's free ones. Like I was looking at this Sugarland Express the other day. Goldie Hawn and uh, I don't know, you even know who the other fucking people were. But that was Spielberg's, I think they call it his first official or second official directed film. And, um, you know, he did a good job. He didn't have none of that Spielberg silliness. You know, little kids, some mysterious adventure and discovery and shit like that. It was based on a true story. 1969, the event took place. I was like kind of shocked. He embellished the, sh the shit a little bit, but had to look up the real story. I like to see footage of it. There wasn't too much footage of it. I didn't look that deeply. But that shit was a crazy ass story. It almost reminded me of a uh, dog day afternoon type of shit. <laughs> People get themselves killed for something stupid. But it is what it is. Anyway, Godfrey Cambridge movies, I got got a hold of most of them. I didn't get to see them. Figure since he had a short career, might as well check his movies out. Because the only ones I knew prior to looking them up the other day was... Uh, Cotton Comes to Harlem, Charleston Blue, Watermelon Man, and something else. That, that movie, he they said he was doing a movie. He had a heart attack. Got me to thinking about that rapper, Miss Melody. She was big, too, with the heart attack. Big pun. He was big as fuck, too. So it's clear when the doctors talk about obesity heart disease, diabetes, all this shit together and weight control. You know, you, you gotta, you gotta take that shit seriously. Cause, uh, Miss Melody was big. You know, big pun was gigantic. <laughs> and like I said, uh, Godfrey Cambridge, Cambridge was big. In his movies in the 60s, he was even bigger. So by the time he got to Watermelon Man, and even Cotton Comes to Harlem, he, he lost some weight. But, you know, I don't know. Maybe he had some blockage in his heart arteries or something. I don't know. I don't know what the st state of the technology was back in the, in the early 70s. But you got to take that shit seriously. And, you know, big people, I'm going off again, but big people, they usually like eating steaks, uh, fatty foods, and shit like that. You know, fine meals. See, people like me, I'm not saying I'm skinny, but I'm just saying people like me, I could actually survive off of and feel good about eating some nicely seasoned rice and beans, really, to be honest with you. I I can I'll be I can be satisfied with a tuna fish sandwich. <laughs> you know I don't really eat meat like that. Especially beef is not because of a ritual. I de definitely don't eat pork, but it's not because of any ritual or religion or nothing like that. It's just that just don't do that. Just not in the mood for it. Even though I have been eating chicken, I did find that. Harvest chicken, harvest land chicken in a store finally didn't quite taste the same. Anyway, uh, uh, let me get to the main point again, which I mean, that was part of it too, but Caribbeans impersonating us. Plus, we got to look around for these immigrants. I'm going to get into that in a second. But Tariq Nasheed, what really got me about what he said the other day. 
couldn't help but notice how his video was long. He's like, oh, I'm going to bring up my resume. I, I'm, I'm one of the greatest people, greatest black, he didn't say leader, greatest black uh, whatever the fuck he said, ever. He's like, I've done so much for black people. That's why I'm glad to Harker Bay, I guess his uh, 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 order, court order must have expired. I guess that's why he's back on uh, Tariq Nasheed's case, which is fine with me. See, when it comes to that part of Taharka Bay, I su support him on his talk about Tariq Nasheed. Even though Taharka Bay does seem to be one of those Pan-African types that You know, they support every foreign black, but they don't really support black Americans, you know, which to me raises an eyebrow, especially when you consider his facial features. But, um, Tariq Nasheed said, I got, I got the long resume. And I was listening to his resume to the other, most people, they might just say, you know what? This man did some spectacular shit. But see, I tell you what you can't put on your resume. None of your business ventures. You can't put your hidden colors. That's not a resume of helping black people. You can't put none of your so-called documentaries out there. You can't put Mac and books. He even listed that shit as a fucking resume. Listed Ustream as a resume. That's not helping black people. That's helping you. Kickstarter, he even listed begging for money in the Hidden History Museum as a part of his resume. Unbelievable. I'm like, how? But then when he wanted to try to list something that seemed like he actually helped somebody, because if you notice, Tariq Nasheed has not, will not, and has <laughs> and you can't do nothing to make him except for sue his ass give up one penny to anybody black especially i mean how long does it have to take before you realize the man does not like black people that's why i called him uncle tom but people are tricked some people like getting pimped they just like the sound of the pimp as long as the pimp can sound good and make them uh, feel special, they say, okay, let me go out on the corner and let me grease my ass up and, and take the first customer that comes along. It's amazing. People love it. Just give up their money, God damn it. That's why I try not to argue too much about it because I realize, you know, if a pimp can talk people out of their money, then brag to them about what they did with the money and, and what they're about to do with the money all while constantly putting you down. Then God damn it, what can I really do? You're under the spell, you're brainwashed. Like I always say, Tariq Nasheed, as soon as these white people come up, it's sir, respect, he lets them talk. Matter of fact, really anybody. And those uh, mongrel Hispanics uh, call up. Got the nerve to be trying to hate on black people, but try to act like uh, we're worried about race all the time. Like that Danilo Lopez, whoever it was on Facebook. Looking like Russell Wilson and shit. Talking about he's not black. That big ass nose and big ass lips. You talking about you ain't black. Ain't that skin color. Like, motherfucker, if you ain't black, who the fuck is black? It's amazing. That's why I told you don't trust these goddamn Negroid Hispanics. But I want Pan-Africans to keep getting on their case. Well, not to keep getting on their case. I want them to start getting on their cases and, and tell them that they are African people. Now, what it's going to do is going to drive them to find every white or white looking person they can find and have kids with them even more so. <laughs> that's what's really going to make them do. But that's what Pan-Africans need to do. They need to leave us the fuck alone. And deal with these African people. 
Because they're the Uncle Tom house niggas and the open enemy. Talking about just because he got a Spanish name, he's not black. Fuck out of here with that. So, these Pan Africans are full of shit. Tariq Nashi, he's full of shit. What he said was. Let me pull up my resume of how I've helped people. He mentions people who are dead like Dr. Francis Crest Welsing. He says he paid for some people to get out of prison, out of jail. See, that's stuff that he can make claim to, but he can't prove. I challenged the Negro, Negro to prove that shit. I was going to call him a nigga. I challenged the Negro to prove that. I had did a small exploration into looking to see if he paid for Dr. Francis Crest Wilson's funeral. Preliminary results come up empty. Getting some of these guys in the media out of jail... See, that, those are shits that he says that he did. And it can sound good. It sounds like he's doing something. Sounds like he's supporting black power, but I know he didn't do it because number one, you wouldn't brag about it. That's number one. You only brag about it because you want people to think that you're doing something. Two, you would prove it. But you can't prove it. That's why he says he got people out of jail, paid for funeral expenses. Because it sounds good and nobody's going to look into it. And even if they did, it's going to be hard to come up with it. Dr. Francis Quest Welsing was not a fucking bum. She was a fucking professor. And you know she had insurance the fuck she need you to pay for her funeral expenses for when the money you got came from hustling people I mean it's fucking crazy she wasn't broke she was a fucking college professor you know she got fucking insurance I mean come on and the guys that were in jail, if they weren't convicted of a crime, which of course jail comes before that, they can they either walked out after a while anyway or posted bail. And even if they didn't post bail, I'm sure they went to trial. You getting them out of jail. See, he gets that shit from movies like uh, uh, Harlem Nights. Where Richard Pryor's crew wall went to jail. He comes in there with the briefcase full of money and bails them all out, looking like a big shot. So that's what Tariq Nashi wanted. He wants to look like a big shot. Oh yeah, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. <clears throat> but as soon as somebody calls up asking him for something, and for people who've been following uh, him for a while, you know some people have, Tariq Nashi ain't got shit to say, uh, you, you trolling, get out of here. Because he ain't trying to give up no goddamn money. And then when he tries to act like he's giving up some money, oh, you know, we can't discuss game on, on the air. So email me. You know, when Tahar Bay does that email shit, just like Tariq Nashi, they do that email shit. You already know what the fuck that means. Get the fuck out of here, but I ain't trying to make, make it look like I'm trying to say that on the air, though. So he can sh show these receipts. I want to see these receipts. If you can brag about it, you can show it. So, what we got to do, and he said he was sending Dr. Ben some money, and he tried to say the whole teppers that were exploiting him, which they were. But I didn't hear Dr. Ben ever mention a Tariq Nashi. Now, those whole teppers. 
they were exploiting them, but in their own videos, I saw them getting them some food. Getting them some books and doing some shit for them. So it's not like they didn't do anything for them, but of course it was exploitation to get some views on the uh, on their videos. But it also served as an update at the time. But Tariq Nashi, did you go there? You said you gave them some money. We don't know that. And if you gave them some money, how, how much was it? Was it $10? $20? Well, what the fuck was it? Why did he have to ask those guys for some fucking food? If you gave them some goddamn money. Lying ass. No, you didn't give them no goddamn money. Show it. Maybe we got to wait for Target Bay to the, 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 uh, come up with some receipts that you ain't coming up with. You know what? Somebody tell me, I think I looked, I was looking up where she's buried at. Once, once I find that out, cause I, I just looked and asked some uh, people that was affiliated with her on Facebook and, and I couldn't find, they, they, they couldn't verify that shit, but she wasn't broke where she needed some Negro to eat. Now she, who claims that she was his heroine. The man does not even follow what she was talking about. She was talking about white genetic annihilation. <clears throat> and how you shouldn't procreate with them. But then that's what he goes and does. He, he never interviewed her. He never interviewed Dr. Ben. Or should I say Dr. Ben? See, Dr. Francis Press Wilson was a doctor, but... I know some people are going to say, oh, how dare you going to put down Dr. Ben? Telling the truth ain't putting nobody down. There's no evidence that the man was a doctor. So he's Dr. Ben. Now, she never interviewed them. He exploited Dr. Francis Quest Welsing in his documentaries. Just like you, he said that the uh, whole teppers exploited Dr. Ben. You exploited everybody that was in your motherfucking video. And he keeps on talking about hidden colors because that's his claim to fame. And when he talks about his Mackin books, he's just trying to get people to, uh, the, the, to go out and, and possibly buy one of those shits. Talking about they sold 250,000 copies. Get the fuck out of here. White people ain't buying that shit. He said he, that was the inspiration for Hitch. Maybe, maybe not. All I know is that Hitch was born. I think it was a hit because of the, the way it was advertised. With Will Smith with the uh, swollen uh, face. Which I think he stole that idea from Martin. So, you know, it looked like it could have been funny. But when I actually saw that shit, man, I was... I actually had met some girl online... Went over her house for the first time. We were watching that shit. I was falling asleep. I kept saying to myself, man, I'm slipping because I can't stay awake. I said, God damn it, I got to stay awake. <laughs> now, I had been talking to her for a little while, but then I finally went over there. I said, I got to stay awake, man. I don't want to end up in the motherfucking freezer or nothing like that in pieces and shit. That's how boring that movie was that shit was put literally putting me to sleep and i'm always alert always on my game that shit was putting me to sleep i'm not even sure i finished watching the shit but i was hoping that the shit would end and i had no desire to want to go re-watch it on my own just to see if something uh there was something about it. I, and I don't think there was ever a sequel. So that goes to show you that it was one of those box office hits. That uh, was a hit because, it, you know, the people got fooled. Just put it like that. <laughs> um, 
So, somebody just pulled up. I guess they see the phone. They think I'm recording. I guess they afraid that they're going to get on camera. I'm going to park someplace else then. God damn it. Because anyway, <clears throat> there's no evidence that this Negro did anything for black people at all. No evidence. The man never likes discussing small hats. That's why every time people call up and they bring up the small hats, the man acts like a slave defending his master, which is that, that that's what he is. Can't talk about the small hats to Tariq Najee. You got to change the topic, get you off, do whatever it takes. But once uh, uh, the topic is about Africans and Caribbeans, he can see he got all the words for them. <laughs> I mean, damn. Like I always say, if Tariq Nasheed had been a neo-Nazi saying the shit about Africans and Caribbeans that he's been saying, you people will want his head. I swear. People like Tariq Nasheed are lucky that coons like him broke my momentum that I had with the other channel because I had steady donations coming through. And if it, they would have increased to Tariq Nasheed levels, then that kind of money could have been used to take care of business. And I ain't going to tell you what kind of business, but let's just say coons would be watching their mouth. Just let's just say that. <laughs> but instead, coons are running wild. Real coons. Not the agents who call other people who disagree with them coons. That's why when I speak, I'm trying to show people how to recognize these coons. Again, Tariq Nasheed, other people, Umar Johnson. Once I start hearing something that contradicts some shit that they say, Umar Johnson contra contra contradicts himself even more than um, uh, than Tariq. But Tariq contradicts himself a lot. Especially when you ask him or when people call up asking him about who's African and how you're an FBA and all this type of shit. Because he always says... Um, We've been here before the white man, but we're not from Africa, but we came, our people came from Africa and everybody comes from Africa. You know, that's that con man shit. Now people don't fall for that shit, except for his, uh, cock, uh, pullers, <laughs> That's why the people call up, they keep asking him uh, to show and prove. This white lady looking at me. <clears throat> See, they always watch you when they try to act like they're not looking at you. But um, they always ask him to show and prove this shit. What do you mean by we were here first, but yet at the same time, we came from Africa. He can't explain himself because once people start realizing that you're full of shit and start asking more questions, no matter how nice they are, that's when he has to cut them off because he knows he's full of shit and he can't explain that shit. So he's like, man, fuck this. Let me just get this guy out of here. That's why you got to have a Negro like Tariq Nasheed in a neutral form, which he won't end up in because he can't handle it. All these con men and liars, they can't, if you notice, Pan-Africans, all the con people, I'm calling them out. Umar, Seti, now Umar says you got to pay me, now Tariq Nasheed is on that pay me shit, uh, Taharka Bay. And yes, I'm going to say it. Dane Calloway, because that's the way he's been acting. 
Uh, who the fuck else? Anybody like that? Phil Valentine, all these people. When they say pay me, now if they say pay me to somebody who pays, then you know, fine. I, I, I'll go with that. Because, you know, like a side netter or somebody like that. <clears throat> a guy like him should be paying. But when he says that to anybody, then that's a different situation. To me, that indicates that you can't back up what you're saying. And debating hood rat, just got out of prison, never finished high school type of people. To me, that's a waste of time. Because these people don't know the basics of shit. All they do is do quick Google searches and these days you're hitting propaganda first. And then they think they got it. They know it all. Like I was just on Facebook with some white dude who jumped on that Danilo Lopez uh, debate that I mean or discussion. <clears throat> and um, he's like, uh, black people got to stop trying to claim everybody's history is their own. I said, motherfucker, that's what white people do. Fuck you talking about. He's like, no, they don't. I said, motherfucker, white people claim to be Arabs. They claim to be Jews. They claim to be ancient Egyptians, Babylonians, Semites, uh, fucking Native Americans, all, every damn thing you could think of. I mean, come on. Then I gave him the link to the Black Everything site. And he comes back to me. The first thing he talks about is they spelled some words wrong. I said, who gives a fuck about that? Don't worry about what they spell, because I don't even know where the fuck the people are from. I said, worry about, are the artifacts real or are they not? That's what you need to worry about. And when sites like that demonstrate fake artifacts, now you got to ask it, especially when compared to real ones that are black. Now you got to ask yourself, why would they do that? You know why. Which segues into part of the main point I was trying to make. As I was rolling around today. <clears throat> I see. Fuck you going slow for. So I see. You know, they keep everybody's talking about immigrants, migrants. And you notice how migrants it's supposed to be different from illegals. Migrants are supposed to be people. What's going on with these people? Migrants were supposed to be people who were invited here by the U.S. government. And they got the hookup. Illegal immigrants... We're supposed to be people who slipped in illegally. But as I said years ago, they were also invited here. Because how do you know this? Because there used to be no Mexican types in certain areas of the country. Now they're all over the place, along with uh, jalapeno this. Uh, ghost pepper that taco this taco that burrito this burrito that Spanish this Spanish that everything to accommodate Mexicans not even other types of Hispanics that's why the coon negro Hispanics are trying to jump on board with the Mexicans because they figure well yeah I'm a Latino now if they're getting benefits let me see what I can get See, cowardly people like that I don't have time for. Switch hitters. Stay the course. That's why you paying Africans. You want to impress me. Stay on their asses. That's what I want, want to see you do. Force them to be black and African. Don't just say, oh, well, they don't want to be African. Well, I'm going to leave them alone. Well, we don't want to be either. Leave us alone. But you can't leave us alone. Why not? 
And I'm tired of Umar and Afro Stink Tank always calling people African. Blanket African. Get them all. If you're going to get, if you want to get a few of us, get them all. And that includes the North Africans that are black or, or clearly black because you know mixing comes into play. Fucking Islam had a fucking system of slavery. If you people can't tell who the fuck is mixed, then you people are dimwits. That's, the, that's how I look at the shit. Just because somebody starts speaking uh, Arabic and have some name you can't recognize or speaking Spanish now, all of a sudden you don't know what the fuck mix looks like. But when it's us, we come in all colors. Got to stop this kind of shit. So, I'm thinking. There are places I see everywhere I go. Foreigners. Whether they're Caribbean, African, Asian, even European, Hispanic. They're getting the hookup. We're being marginalized and pushed out. And a lot of us who are set are thinking to ourselves, well, I'm set. Work harder, but you got to think about your immediate next generation. That is your children. Then look at their children. Then you combine the constant mixing, which is what black people do because black people don't want to admit it. But whether when you mix with somebody else, because now these Mexicans are, are the new people that's been introduced to uh, most of the rest of the country now and even Canada by design. It's not. Uh, again, the United States has been here for a while, but Mexican types, they had so many uh, hundreds of years to get to the rest of the part of the country, but they never bothered until around 25, 30 years ago. Why? That's when they started trickling in. Why now? And now it's at a more accelerated pace that these freeloaders, not of their own, but invited by the white man, are now entrenched in parts of the country that they have no history in it. You think from Boston to Atlanta. Chicago to New Orleans. These motherfuckers had no history. But now they're settled in. You notice how New Orleans, uh, Louisiana is right next to Texas. Now, I haven't been to Louisiana. I've been to Texas. But have you noticed that Texas is known for having a lot of Mexicans? They had a lot more when I went there. When I went there, I was it shocked the hell out of me because you never hear hear about Mexicans in Texas. You always hear about uh, white guys, Texas Rangers and Cowboys and shit in Texas. But Louisiana is not known for Mexicans. I, I, maybe Truthful Troll can help me out because uh, I don't know how long you just don't hear about Mexicans in New Orleans or Baton Rouge or no place like that. So... But now they're established here. Like I said, you got products. Wendy's used to have a queso hamburger. You know that wasn't for us. And the shit didn't last long. The shit looked disgusting. I didn't even want to try it. I said, who the fuck wants some shit like that? It looked like a bunch of sloppy shit. Now, for people who don't know, when you travel from one part of the country to another part, you see McDonald's, Subway, Wendy's. Now, I'm just talking about the national chains. And of course, you got regional chains. But the national chains will have foods that the local areas like or and they think that other areas won't like. You know, like, like when you go to the south, excuse me, you'll see a lot of Biscuits and gravy type combinations. Chicken and biscuits, which, you know, they started moving that shit into the north uh, 
a few years ago. McDonald's, uh, Chick-fil-A, even Wendy's with the chicken on a biscuit. Now, I personally don't like that kind of shit because this shit is too dry. I'm still not used to chicken and biscuits. Maybe if they put some type of sauce on that shit, I'll take it. <laughs> but the shit is just too damn dry for me. No cheese, no sauce. I mean, goddamn. Gotta have something. Uh, I gotta open this door just a little bit. It's fucking, it's crazy how it's fucking hot in the car, cool outside. And I think the tipper's like, like 65 or something like that. Fucking crazy. But, um, in case you're wondering why I do it in the car, it's because of the acoustics in the car better than if I did it in the house. Because then I have to turn on the computer and use the better mic and all that kind of shit. So I could do this wherever I'm at. Now, Umar Johnson, as has been proven by Lennon Honor and other people, he does it because my man apparently don't have a place to stay. All that money, he must, Lennon Honor must be right about him now. Must be the drugs. Because how can you have money flow through your hand? But he got to be a Freemason agent, too. How can you have money flowing through your hands and you don't have a place to stay? But you got a fucking school. So that must be the Freemasons hooking him up to con us. Because or somebody else hooking him up to con us. Well, not us, of course. With that school to get some more money. Now, <clears throat> I guess he could live in that school, but I personally wouldn't want to. Because you know they got to be rats running around in that motherfucker. The only way I, I live in that motherfucker, if I didn't have any money, was uh, had to buy me a motherfucking tent. And I got to have a gun. Machete and a gun. You think about that shit. Sleeping in some shit like that. And he probably wouldn't want to leave his car out there. Because people see the car overnight. And they'll say, okay, he must be in there. <laughs> so that's the that's the, the rough part. But he ain't getting that school open. I'm convinced now. I mean, this shit's been happening for 20 years. I mean, goddamn. You announced this shit 20 years ago. Now you got a motherfucking baby born 20 years ago. Now the motherfucker is a grown man and a grown woman. And there's still no school. That's how I look at the shit. 20 years ago, <laughs> you're supposed to be doing something for the kids. Now you got a fucking, now that these motherfuckers are grown people. And you still have no school. I mean, come on. Were they really supposed to go to the goddamn school? It's fucking crazy. Fucking liar. So. We. Got to stop listening to. The Caribbeans and their mystical, magical and black Freemasonry all together. Because Black Freemasonry, they, they just got to show me. Even if you can't reveal all the plans, you got to show me. How the shit is benefiting us. Give me a clue. Because right now it just looks like. It's anti-black. Pro-white. To the benefit of a few. Because you notice now you got everybody talking about Boule to try to throw people off. You got Seti talking about Boule. Uh, <clears throat> you got Tariq Nashi talking about the boule, but again, clues come from who they support. Visa Islam. What the fuck kind of name is Visa Islam? Another kind man game like name like Tariq Nashi, Louis Farrakhan. Another kind, another Mason. Said he keep talking about all the occult shit, but he's really teaching you that shit. He's not teaching you about it and how evil it is. He's just teaching you about it. Now, I will admit with Seti, 
he goes into the, to the satanic part. The other people don't do that. They just talk about outer space. Uh, shit to, that just takes your mind to another world and, 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 and some bullshit. I say we're Freemason. You take away the money. Nobody believes any of that shit. I can guarantee you that. People are only in it because of the fucking money and the benefits that they give you. And the, they give people the benefits because they need people to go against the masses. Agents. All this boule shit. All this boule talk. But what is it actually doing? Because these people who get interviewed, you could tell YouTubers who get interviews with major people are obviously one of those types of uh, individuals and they get the fake hits on the internet. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to the old fashioned way of doing things. Just put the information out there because uh, these people are too well connected, too well financed and they keep conning black people, but black people, they support other people and they go against black people, black Americans. And as I look around, I see Mexicans getting the hookup. Jamaicans, everybody from around the world. They get the hookup in America, but they keep us down. Now, it'll be very interesting, but not shocking if the white man put all these fucking immigrants to try to destroy America just to get at us. And I say, damn, man, are we that important? But again, one of my videos that got shut down by YouTube as soon as it was put up, the Germanic treatment of the, I think I said, uh, indigenous black peoples, which is on Rumble. As soon as it was put up on YouTube, it was taken down. And there was nothing I said in that video that should have been taken down. Except for the fucking truth. And the truth was, look at what they did to Australia and South Africa. Hell, in the UK itself. Take over the place. Beat down, kill. And try to dismiss and detach the indigenous people from participating in the new governments that's been set up. Give them nothing. But yet you still fuck them and mix, them, mix with them. That's why you got aborigines with blonde hair. Light, some of them looking damn near white, not even uh, uh, looking. Uh, <laughs> you wouldn't even be thinking that they were Aborigine if you saw them on the street. Same thing with North Africa, same thing with South Africa, same thing with us. That's why you got these same coon, the Afro think tanks, stink tank, I like that nickname, who keep lying all the goddamn time. They tell us we come in all colors. They tell us we have all hair textures. All facial features that, of an African people. But yet when we point out these other mixed people that's mixed with black. In India, Australia, North Africa, so-called Middle East. The Hispanic world. Now all of a sudden those people are white. Apply the same rules to them as you apply to us. And have you noticed that. All Pan-African rules. They mirror the white man's rules. That only black people are who the white man says are black. Even if your eyes see something else. If Indians were not black, why would you even entertain a Kamala Harris being able to fool you because well, by talking about collard greens or Tupac. How can she fool you into thinking that she was black 
just by talking about collard greens and Hillary Clinton didn't fool you into thinking she was black because she talked about hot sauce. Mindy Kaling's brother didn't fool anybody in thinking that he was black from doing anything but cutting off his fucking hair. The man didn't have to get plastic surgery. He didn't have to uh, 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 do shit but change his name and cut his hair low. That's it. Hell, my sister... They did nothing but Jamaicans. I still wonder if her fucking father was Jamaican or not. She had a Jamaican friend of the East Indian type. And she had a son. Shit, she was living in the hood. I ain't gonna say too much else because that might give away too much. She was living in the hood. And, you know, nobody said that she wasn't black. But they said she was Indian. But Jamaican part came first, though. <laughs> and at the time, you know, I never gave it a second thought. But I'm like, when you think about it, the Indians, East Indians that you do see uh, living in, in, in black hoods are of Caribbean origin. But like I showed you with those killer Caribbean uh, people from Guyana, that they still won't see themselves as black, even though they will look black and act black. And the white man listed them down as black. That's the white man now. Even though their names are Indian names, but they were from Guyana doing crime. So, is it a cultural thing or what? Because why are they doing hood crime and they're coming from Guyana as opposed to doing the East Indian high education shit? And they weren't influenced by so-called African style Guyanese because it was all only them and they did it all, all on their own. <laughs> Nobody else. And that story, they killed white people. So that's why they got they got dealt with by the white man. But see, they label them as black, though, which adds to our crime rate of murder and kidnapping, home invasion. We look bad. So while this shit continues. You see in South Africa, Australia. And I've been thinking about this shit. We see the commonalities in it. In the British world. They so talk about SETI and these others. They start talking about how Indians have been coming along with the British. Now, you know, the only person who's been talking about that shit was me. You know that because I'm the only one who's really been talking about East Indians, period. <laughs> nobody else they didn't they don't have nothing to say because they know when you start talking about east indians that kind of contradicts a lot of this shit that these people talk about when it comes to uh who is melanated who's african and all that kind of shit it contradicts the bullshit that they're talking about And then when you call them out on the shit, then they start trying to switch around the definition of what black is. Black to them, Pan-Africans, is what the white man tells them black is. African, they don't even have a clear definition of what an African is. All I know is they try to avoid North Africa at all costs. And they only call people in South Africa black because the white man did. Now, when you get into North Africa, you notice how the white man being so fucking slick. He starts fading away from the English black. And he gets in, into smooth talk calling uh, people Sudanese. 
Nigerian, Mauritanian, that kind of black. Study was talking about that because now you know if people have been following me, you know, god damn it. I've been on people's lives and other uh, shit when people say they ain't no country, especially when you talk about these uh, uh, Moors. There's no country named black. And I, you know how I am. I always say, yeah, there are. Sudan. <laughs> really, it's supposed to be Kemet, too. It's supposed to be mean black. Uh, Niger. Mauritania, Morocco. Supposed to, the, the, in, in Nigeria, they're supposed to mean black. Whether it's for a river or the people. That means black. More means black. And when more tell you, more science people tell you that more does not mean black, they only say that because then that contradicts there, there are no black people, there are no white people, there are Europeans and there are uh, Africans. So that's why they have to, they can't have the title that they're called actually mean black when they're trying to go against black. So that's why they'll tell you all that shit. And that's why people like to hark about any other more. I don't know who the top so-called more is supposed to be, Sabir, and the other dude, Ta Raj Tahar, Taharka Bay, Ta Tariq Bay, whatever his name is. Hook me up with him. Tell me where their lives are at. Let me go on their lives. And let, let me rock the house. See, when their shit is challenged, that's why I don't like playing my cards too much. Sometimes I play a card here, a card there. So people prepare themselves for that shit. And then I unleash the other shit. But see, that's why they don't like talking to me because they know that they're, they're waiting for the other shit to be unleashed. But see, sometimes I'll get slick and I won't unleash the other shit. I just keep them nervous. <laughs> you just do it like that. But um, it's convoluted. But in Australia and South Africa, you see what they've done. They created. Now I admit the Australian cities with the skylines. The skylines look strong. But um, they invite people from all over the world. To partake in Australia. As racist as Australia and South Africa. Were and still are. Against, especially against the indigenous. Other people. Must have still been invited to these places. Either because. Of the wealth or because. They figure we need allies. To go against the uh, the natives, the indigenous, and you know freeloaders are going to come over, start living well, <clears throat> and praise the white man. And the white man can call him a monkey, and they'll smile and say, <laughs> uh, "You guys are so funny." As long as they're getting paid and not getting treated like us, the Australian Aborigines. South African uh, native indigenous and in uh, and us of course and of course the other connection I make and this is where Pan Africans don't want to make the connection because if they try to that means their Pan African shit falls apart is that and this is two out of three provable. And accepted by others. Australia and South Africa. The people who are marginalized the most. Are the indigenous. And they're both black. In the US. The people who are marginalized the most. Are black. Not from other countries. Us. And only us. And we're indigenous. People think we came from Africa. But the evidence does not show that. Pan-Africans are coon ages, so that's why they got to keep arguing that. But they cannot prove it. I'm going to reveal something because I was on an Afro think tank video. When he just calls people Africans, I said, man, you fool of shit with that. Because he keeps blocking me, by the way. Uh, 
You keep calling everybody an African. Show and prove. He just responds back with name calling. Once they do that, you already know. That means that they can't show and prove. And it also means that they're lying intentionally. So this is why these people are just full of shit. They're concentrating on unity with black people that's not us. That's why when I was a teenage hotep, that's, this is the type of shit I noticed. I said, they're worrying about everybody but us. And they had me worrying about everybody but my people. To the point that I, I kept on asking myself, I said, damn. If we're all trying to help them and they're not trying to help us, what are we getting out of this shit? We got to go to their countries. They come here, freeload. And here's the key part. Not only is it just every other immigrant, but in particular, it's the Caribbean immigrant and to a lesser extent, the African immigrants who come here, they take our jobs or jobs that we could have had. They take programs for us, which whatever programs that could be. They take housing. The reason why I say housing is because you know damn well the fancier the place, the less black a place is. If you're black trying to get into a place, they only really want to uh, but so many number of blacks. Don't think that they're not counting. They know the white people are the ones with the money, Asians with the money. So those are the main people that got to fill up the uh, spot. And then they'll come in with a few quota blacks, but but they'll try to give you some foreigners instead of black Americans. It's getting to the point now where we might have to start lying about who the fuck we are. <laughs> that's the way it's starting to look now, and that's a fucking shame. I'd never forget when an East Indian asked me if I was Jamaican. Now, that story I just told you, I was thinking about her son. I'm like, maybe that could be what it was. Maybe, the, you know, maybe I might, I might have to start rolling in, in that direction. See what kind of benefits I get out of this shit. Because uh, apparently, it's an open book of discrimination against us. They get the quota jobs that's, suppo that's supposed to be for us. That's not cool. And I'm talking about the Caribbean in particular, especially the Jamaican and all other English speaking. That's another thing. Now nah, she said about the Jamaican uh, patois being Irish. He got that from me. But he, 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 he just lied, though. He said the Irish used to rule. Uh, they came over to Jamaica and then they uh, punked the uh, uh, blacks and made them speak that patois. Okay, did they punk the, the British white too? See, when you steal shit, you don't think about the whole shit. Again, with that Jamaican patois, we were always told there are countless documentaries when they talk about Jamaica. They were, we were always told that the Jamaican patois is a mix of English and African, unspecified African, of course, uh, languages. And that's why the Jamaicans sound the way they sound. And we've all simply accepted that. Myself included. But of course, people like me, when we got time to think, <laughs> we start wondering. 
Well, you know, if that's the case, how come we don't have any Jamaican patois? We got colonized by the British. And we're supposed to be African. So what's up with that? Then people like me, we start thinking, how come the Guyanese sounds similar to Jamaican? But look where Guyana is in relation to Jamaica. And I think uh, there's another island in English speaking that kind of sounds similar to Jamaica. And then there are others that don't. And that's the key part. The other English colony in the Caribbean is that don't sound like Jamaicans. So if they're all, if, it, if the patois was a combo of English and some African, unspecified African languages, how come it doesn't apply to all black people who, who got conquered by the British? That right there should tell you something. See, people like me, we start thinking. And how come the patois is spoken by the white man? Huh? But see, people like me, we just start looking at shit and sometimes we stumble across shit by accident. And I'm not going to lie that Jamaican accent being an uh, Irish accent. I stumbled upon that shit by accident. I'm not even going to act like I was looking for it. <laughs> now, see, you got a lot of people on YouTube. They're going to lie to you and say, yeah, man, I, I knew about this shit. Did research. I was doing some other kind of research and got to it by accident. I'm going to tell you what I was doing. I was looking at uh, Sanford and Son because you know how every now and then you get on YouTube, they'll just have a, you know, the, the thumbnail will show you a scene from Sanford and Son. You know, still a hysterical uh, show. I don't know what it was, but something made me look up Sanford and Son on YouTube, on, on Wikipedia. Then I found out that it was made from a British show called Steptoe and Son. And they had a different, so I wanted to see the show. Because I said, damn, I didn't know San Francisco Sun was taken from a British show of all. First, I was like, damn, were they black? Of course they weren't. So I said, let me see this shit. Luckily, that's what I do like about YouTube. You can find some shit like that and actually see the shit. And I was like, damn, they're speaking, I think they call it the Hackney uh, accent. So then I started looking into this Hackney accent. I was like, damn, they got different British accents. Some of them, you can hardly understand what the fuck they're talking about. <laughs> That's, I guess that comes from, uh, you know, the different peoples that were already there when the Anglo, when the English got there. And then that's when I came across a video Uh for Ireland and they were speaking the Jamaican I said what the fuck the shit and it was indistinguishable I said what the fuck now why would they lie to the world and tell everybody especially when people in Ireland knew that there was a motherfucking Irish accent why would they lie to the world and tell us that that shit is English and some African shit? When you know damn well, when you hear various Africans uh, speaking English, they don't sound a goddamn thing like a Jamaican. See, that's all you do. You piece it all together. And then you realize people are lying. But there are so many people who don't think that the white man are lying. And then you got the agents who are Masonic who will try to steer your mind in another direction. 
Well, the only thing you way you can steer my mind in another direction is the st you got to steer the facts in another direction. So why would they lie all these years? And st still people believe that shit. Now that shit was written in books and on TV show and news and tell you the Jamaican Patois is English and African. Find an African that sounds like a fucking Jamaican speaking English. I never heard one. Now, the other question that comes to mind is, as I said either in the last video or another one before that, if the Irish never had any colonies, how the fuck did an Irish accent come to dominate Guyana? Jamaica, a couple other spots. And why do Jamaicans have Irish names? Obviously, they speak an Irish dialect. There's a correlation there. Now, I want Jamaicans to speak up on this because I think Jamaicans know the truth, but they got a lie for the British. Because why else would so many Jamaicans be able to come to the U.S. and be involved in the government at such high levels? And you got one right now who could be placed into the White House. They've been inching and inching British subjects into the, uh, into the White House for the takeover. You got to understand this shit. Even with us, there are a lot of people with Irish names, Irish last names. Not like O'Neill and shit like that. Not too many with uh, Irish first names. I don't think too many of us like the name Patrick. I personally don't like that name, Patrick. <laughs> I think it's a whack ass name. I hate that name. Uh... But again, the Irish didn't have any colonies and they didn't have any empire. And the British had taken over Ireland before they were really able to do their uh, other things. This video, watch the video. There's videos about showing how Oliver Cromwell uh, took over Ireland. He was, he was one of their uh, big conquerors. Even to this day, the British still own Northern Ireland. But of course, as we know, Irish, the white ones anyway, hate black people. But Dublin had a African mayor recently. <laughs> And, of course, we know Dub, from reading that McRitchie book, means black. So, <laughs> you know, it's, it's crazy, but people got to lie. Because they don't want people to draw inspiration from the past. So, we are going to really have to think about our future. And are we going to have one? We got to stop worrying about Africans. Uh, we got to stop worrying about mystical, magical shit. We got to stop supporting these coon agents. Like I said, most of these coon agents, the numbers that they get are all manufactured. I think to Taharka Bay's credit, he figured that shit out too. Uh, especially when it came to Tariq Nashi's donations and shit for that Hidden History Museum. Uh... Again, people like me, other people, we all be TV, we get shut down in the numbers game. We're not allowed to expand. And again, we all be TV. You could technically say that's where I made my debut at. <laughs> when he had the blog talk radio and the YouTube, you could say that's where I made my debut. 
Um, you know, my man had a good service. Still does. He's still on. Uh, but blog talk after a while, you know, you got to pay for that shit. And if people aren't supporting you, it's like you're bleeding. You know, you just can't be paying the shit out your pocket. And basically all you're getting in return for it is hearing your voice. Matter of fact, I think the last time I went on, I was supposed to have a... Uh, supposed to have been monetized. I didn't even check to see, you know, if I even got anything out of that shit. I never hear anybody from Blog Talk or who used to be on Blog Talk say that they uh, were making any kind of money off of that shit. But, um, and it's funny, in, in a way, that's a con job too, because that's not really a radio. It's uh, just designed to sound like AM radio. <laughs> you pay for the shit. But um, and Black Talk still had a different audience than YouTube too, by the way. But that's the way they do the shit. That's why we all be other people. We we gotta we're constantly trying to figure out how we can uh, do other things. Now me, I know one way, which is to slip shit in in the underground world. That's the best way. That's the way I used to do things before the YouTube. got to do that kind of shit got to go with the websites again and you don't need you know the most elaborate websites these days websites you know they're crazy to maintain on your own uh but you know and it's getting to the point where I, I hate to say it, but maybe I might have to start monetizing shit. Because me, I would have been satisfied with monetizing for the YouTube uh, shit. And they keep saying, oh, I can try to get it monetized, but you know they're going to deny it. But it's just that others get support. Now, I told you the various reasons why other people support just to be a, a part of the shit. And even if they just support just to... Uh, get a super chat read, you're still giving them money. And I've seen people that I know supporting other people that they say that they're against haven't given me one dime. But of course, I never asked for it, but still haven't given me a dime. So I, I just find that fascinating. But when it comes to computer equipment, I never ask anybody for nothing because I carefully pick out computer equipment that will be for my personal needs plus the the video needs and the audio needs. Then you got other people who say, oh, I'm trying to get this new computer, or this new laptop. Somebody uh, lost my laptop and all that kind of shit. I'm like, man, damn. Bottom line is, man, our future, if people, if black people even give a fuck. Again, with the Australian Aborigines and South Africans, I'm seeing the same trend. The trends are, we're all down and out as groups. The education levels is not the highest as a, as a group or as groups. We're all being shit on by other groups. <laughs> and they're coming to our land to get paid. So watching this video of one of these auditors, the guy was in somewhere in Colorado. He went to a nail salon owned by a Vietnamese. Heavy accent. Also went to a coffee shop owned by a Vietnamese. I'm like, damn, these motherfuckers... We're at war with the United States, invaded. And then the white man bombs the hell out of them. And like I, I say, you look at the people that they relocated and then started bombing. They were black. 
And that ain't no lie. You, you even see in the Vietnamese, you still see the black features in a lot of them. So, Vietnam is a communist country. The U.S. lost the war. The country is communist. China is communist, but they the U.S. seems to downplay that these days because of the business relationship with communists. The Vietnam lady, she Vietnamese lady, she came over here, got a nail salon business. Very impressive looking nail salon. I mean, they, they, they look like that shit costs a lot of money. Says she was in partnership with somebody else. The name sounded Italian. Another guy had a, a Vietnamese coffee shop in a white area of Colorado. Let us even dream about that kind of shit. They do everything to stop us, so they probably wouldn't even give us business. Unless we were serving soul food. Every time we come up with something, the small hat has to take control of it. Or black people who get money from the small hats to round us up. And then they eventually lose the Empire Dame uh, uh, Dash, the Suge Knights of the world. They sold out, got what they got, ended up with nothing. And we don't have control of shit. I just heard the other day on the radio or someplace I was at. Music is in such a bad state these days. Somebody remade the song from Greece. I said music has just sunk to a new all time low. Why? Would somebody remake a song from a movie? Then I saw that Kevin Hart TV show on Peacock. I didn't watch the show. But you see, when your career falls off like Kevin Hart, you try to be cooned out all over the place. You got to try to come back and be black, just like Eddie Murphy does. I guess the show is about some gangsters from the 70s. Why? Who knows? Probably they figure that's the best thing that can attract somebody. The soundtrack they used was the soundtrack from Black Caesar. How or why do you use the theme song from somebody else's movie? Is it easier to license than to hire somebody to do some new shit? I think it should be easier, well, be quicker to just license the song. But it should be easier to hire somebody new and have them uh, make some new shit. Because, you know, there's a lot of starving artists out here. But of course, we're at the point in music where people can't play instruments anymore. Or at least at, not at the masterful levels that people used to be able to play them at. Uh... You know, it's it's a dead industry now. No creativity. There's nothing left. And without us, see, like I always say, rap music they claim is 50 years old. From the hip hop to... I mean, technically, funk got created before hip hop. But that... Funk, funk. I don't want to say it was after hip hop, but you know what I mean. Probably layered in and with it. That was another one of our creations. You could say James Brown and Sly Stone got that together. Of course, James Brown came out before Sly Stone. Uh, what else was there? I'm trying to think of what came out kind of musics that we create 
around the 80s. I guess that new Jack Swing type of shit. Even though that's based on sampling old music or replaying it. I guess the way it was mastered, I guess that creates a a new type of sound, so to speak. And truth be told, that type of sound actually helped to supplant the R&B and bring it down. You need bands in R&B. You just can't rely on the hip-hop DJ anymore. So what my point is, by by now, even 10 years ago, we should have had some new shit. Not a different version of rap. Not a different version of something. We should have had something new that we created. So we have stagnation on creativity, and part of that is because we got all these Caribbeans who have infiltrated, and they don't create too much. They create some shit on their own, but not in our world. And you notice how people like Tariq Nasheed stealing my shit when I said Hispanics created nothing and they have contributed nothing. And I'm not saying that to put people down. I'm saying that because that's the fact. You see how they copied my shit. They just take over. Like I told you he was going to do with Eidos. I told you he was going to do with my topic, which he did. And other people's shit, he just, that's that's what they do. That's why you see Yvette Carnell is still pissed the fuck off. As she should be. <laughs> but she should have known that the shit was coming. She should have known that. People who keep trying to talk to Tariq, they keep thinking they're going to get some money. But Tariq is not going to give you one dime. He gets money. He brings his whole family, included, including the suspected white supremacist wing of the family. He keeps trying to dismiss his white family members. But you can't dismiss them because those are your blood relatives. And he'll probably say, no, they're not. Your kids. Those are your white blood relatives, buddy. Damn, I hour and 37 minutes again. And it is kind of stuffy in here. So I'm going to do, I'm going to let this go, but i got to start thinking about the immediate future. We got to start creating jobs for those who have businesses and the means. Instead of saying, let me hire the best person for the job, you should be saying, let me make sure I hire Black Americans first. And if they don't qualify, a Caribbean or African second. But my advice to you would be to not hire any more Africans or Caribbeans, especially family members, after you hire the first one. Because they're going to come in and bum rust the whole shit and take over the shit. Trust me. So don't do that. Pecking order, black Americans first, Caribbeans and Africans if you have to, because they don't hire us when they have their businesses. So that's why I wouldn't even hire them to begin with. But if you had to, if they had a certain expertise, go in that direction. Indian, don't hire them at all because they're going to spy, sabotage and destroy your whole shit. Same thing with a small hat, by the way. An Italian. That's that's iffy. That's iffy. But any of those groups, though, you, you hire one, they're going to try and bring in another. See, that's the difference between these other groups and us. When we are in a position to hire, we say... We're looking for the main reason not to hire other black people. That's what we look at first. Because you want to be seen as equal and fair. In other words, you want the white man to pat you on the head. That's why we got to stop 
being so discriminatory against our own people. And you see with the Tyreek Hill incident, you got Cuban cops, South Florida acting like that. Like they don't know who the fuck he is and he's going to the goddamn stadium. He's the fucking star of the team. Driving an expensive automobile. You don't think that he plays on the motherfucking team? <laughs> I mean, come on. Hopefully he sues the police department because, you know, when they deal with these events, they're not supposed to be, uh, you know, doing all that kind of crazy shit. Just like I kind of cringe when I see cops at NBA games and there's a fight. And cops are trying to get involved and break it up. So I don't like that kind of shit. These black guys shouldn't have to uh, play worrying about, okay, if I push this cop out of the way, am I going to jail now for battery on a, a law enforcement officer? Because they're not, they're supposed to protect the product from the public. Not get involved in fights. Because I've seen a few cops get involved in fights in some NBA games last season. I'm like, nah, man, that ain't your job. I'm sure they must have had, somebody must have spoken to them about that shit. Because the shit will get out of hand when a cop tries to exercise some powers and, and, and ego. And say, you know what, I'm going to arrest this guy at the game. Who's going to stop me? So you can't have shit like that. That's the kind of shit that'll make a person like Tyreek Hill say, man, well, the fuck the Miami Dolphins. Once, once my contract is up, I'm out of here. So that's why South Florida ain't really the South, man. Because it's a fucking Cuban takeover. Crazy. Hierarchy of Caribbeans, apparently in South Florida, are the, those who are the whitest. Down to the darkest who. It's crazy. But we'll see what the plans are. I think the plans for the United States. Seems to be. Uh, uh, disrupt what the US was. Make it seem like women are in control. And anybody who can run for president. They can they can get it. Uh, except for black Americans of course. And uh once America is not looking like America, beg for the British. But no matter what, the small hats are in control in the background. That's always the constant. So <laughs> when you don't see that kind of shit, then that's when you know things have changed. But of course, you ain't going to see that shit as long as the banks remain in their hands. So with that, I'm out.